Meantime, some health professionals questioning whether long COVID symptoms are still a real threat. In a Wall Street Journal op-ed published today, a professor at Johns Hopkins School of Medicine argues, quote, public health officials have massively exaggerated long COVID to scare low-risk Americans as our government gives more than $1 billion to a long COVID medical industrial complex. So joining us now, Dr. Monica Gandhi, professor of medicine at the University of California, San Francisco. Dr. Gandhi, thank you for giving us some of your time. Uh, how do you respond to the claims in this op-ed? Well, it's strongly worded, um, but actually there is a lot of merit to the studies that are quoted in that article. There are two studies that are really important. One, and they're recent, one is from JAMA, which is one of our best medical um, journals that actually showed us that the risk of long symptoms were more with other pathogens, other respiratory pathogens during this time than were with COVID. And we have to remember that we've always seen post-viral syndromes after other respiratory pathogens, and usually it's associated with the severity of disease. And what this article points out is as the severity of disease has gone down, it's accurate to say that so has the frequency of long COVID symptoms. It usually happens from the beginning when people were really sick and then they have these long-term symptoms. So now it's gone down to about um, 1% from mild infections, even less. And uh, the, U the U.S. is a big outlier, um, according to what you're showing here, in saying 20% of COVID infections result in long symptoms. That, that hasn't been observed. About 75% of this country has been infected with COVID, and we don't have 20% of them still suffering, luckily. Yeah, so as you just said there, Dr. Gandhi, I mean, people get sick, and it is normal. That's one of the arguments. It is normal after you are sick to take a while to to fully recover. Um, but do you think that the long COVID risk has been exaggerated? I think it has by the CDC. It hasn't by all parties, but 20%. They actually had a, a, a graphic that you showed. Um, that's that's absolutely not accurate. No other study has showed that. The JAMA, there was a great piece in Nature, um, and then Journal of Internal Medicine just last week showed us that about 1% uh, of people with mild illness will still have lingering symptoms. And our degree of severity is coming down with our vaccines, our therapeutics, and natural immunity. All of that is getting better. So we're getting less and less long COVID. Okay, and you know, we certainly don't want to lessen, you know, the seriousness of the disease, but let's talk about what the author is calling the quote, long COVID medical industrial complex. Do you agree with the claim that this exaggeration is all intended to pump billions into it? You know, I think at the beginning of the pandemic, there were so much severe disease. There were people that were having a lot of symptoms. And that was where these initial NIH dollars got allocated. I don't think the NIH deliberately said, oh, this is going to go down with time. They they should have hoped that. And in fact, it did go down with time. But that's because they probably didn't think the vaccine would come this quickly. There's actually a study from Nature magazine, Michael Edelstein, that shows that vaccination reduces the long COVID symptoms down to the same as if you had not been infected. So no, I think it was because we didn't know what was going on at the beginning and all those resources were put in. And likely what will happen is the NIH now are following cohorts. They'll see less and less of it and they'll be adjusting funding accordingly. All right, Dr. Gandhi, as always, thank you for your time in explaining that. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.